Today, we we're going to look at Purdue versus Illinois, which happened this past Friday, two days ago from when I post this. We're going to discuss why this game in particular led to me having more questions about mostly Purdue, but both Illinois and Purdue, than it actually answered despite Purdue dominating most of the game. Let's go. Question number one is, how important is Zach Eady on offense for Purdue? As we can see here, boom, Purdue gets an easy layup. Why did they get this easy layup? And they got it because 33, who, uh, albeit is not the best defender, especially help side, uh, is so focused on Edie. So although Braden Smith is the one that gets this easy layup, Edie, I think, at least deserves partial credit for Purdue getting this wide open layup. Okay, example number two. We can see Purdue throws it into Edie, which they do commonly. What happens immediately? Double happens. Okay, so Zach Edie, A, causes essentially somebody to get an open shot. Ideally, he's probably passing it to D5 here, but he gives it to four. What should four do? Now that there's this wide open player, four should probably kick it out instead of forcing it. However, four forces it. So who's there to help? Zach Eady. Zach Eady comes away with the rebound, getting it from two, immediately kicks it back out. Okay? Again, generates essentially three open shots in one possession. All right, so then we jump to Purdue, the first, first possession without Zach Eady. Okay, so notice the score is 20 to four. So Purdue has done pretty well with Zach Eady on the floor. Okay, so what happens in this first possession? Okay, move the ball around. They're essentially trying to seal with four, unsure what to do, a little bit of a drive, and a contested mid-range off-balance shot. Probably not a good look relative to the looks they were getting that gave them the 20, the 16-point lead to begin with. Okay, a couple of possessions later. Let's see what happens. Look for a ball screen up top. Illinois playing decent defense. The big issue is, uh, is anyone paying attention to number four right here? Nope. So it was just sagging in the paint. It means Braden Smith is having a real issue with driving. They're confused, no clear offense. Eventually do get the ball into the middle, and uh, what do they have? A mid-range floater by a forward. Also, probably not a good shot. All right, a couple possessions later, we can see Purdue's running a very specific action. This is just flow frame. They're trying to specifically run something. Okay, so we're setting a screen for Smith here, coming across. Clearly, there's some miscommunication. Instead, 55 comes off for the dribble handoff. Attacks, getting downhill. Decent, fine. Throws the ball in there, probably not the point, the person you want handling the ball or throwing the ball into tight spaces, throws it away. And here's the most important part. What is Smith doing right here? He is clearly frustrated. Somebody wasn't sure what they were supposed to do. This, I think, is symbolic of what happens when Zach Eady comes out. Okay, so right here, this little communication, three is upset, four is, says question mark, what's going on, 55 has his hands up. Okay? So what is the situation when Zach Eady comes out on offense, can Purdue still function at a high level, or can they? are they going to struggle always? To highlight this point, Zach Eady comes in at the 844 mark, the score is now within nine. If we noticed previously, it was at 16. While seven's not a huge mark when you're up by 16, it is not insignificant in a fairly short period of time. All right, now let's transition to Illinois on offense. Okay, so first off, what's the kind of weird thing that's happening right here? Okay, this would be arguably the post player for Illinois currently. Who is Zach Eady guarding? Zach Eady is guarding number 20. Number 20 is going to be the cause of, I think, biggest concern for Illinois in this game. Okay, so why is Zach Eady guarding number 20? Because he is not a three-point threat. Okay, so he's not a three-point threat. So Zach Eady can literally just camp in the middle of the paint and essentially be a rim protector. Any drives? Nope. You're not getting to the rim. You got to settle for a floater, settle for something much more difficult. All right, next possession. Even a little bit in transition. Zach Eating, where is he at? Camps in the paint. His defender or his offensive player goes outside. No worries. I'll just stay in here. Okay? And then you can, this allows for essentially bad defense by Purdue. Like, Braden Smith should never be jumping on this shot right here, but it's okay because you have a massive rim protector on the inside, okay? And you're okay with that matchup if you're Purdue, okay? And 20 on the outside, is Zach Eady even remotely worried about him? No, nope, nobody cares. He's out there, it is what it is. You can deal with it, play one-on-one, -on -one, go get the ball. Same concept here, except this time it applies to 42. At least 42 is their post player, so like you have a better logic behind it. Hey, so 42, Zach Eady is ignoring him. Boom, 42 is like, ah, he's a little too tall, I'm gonna back it up. And in here, on the ball screen, Zach Eady can just sag off. Doesn't have to worry about 42 at all. Okay. 
and then force a difficult floater from mid-range. This highlights two things. One, how good, how important Zach Edie on de Edie is on def defense, given his length and, and loose athletic ability. And then two, how much having a shooting big would put a real stress on Zach Edie if he's not able to essentially sit near the rim and protect it. So this is the third question. So notice 20 to four, this is when Zach Edie had just subbed out. So this is the first possession. He is out of the game on defense. Okay? So how much impact does it have on Purdue's defense when he is no longer in the game? Okay, so also notice Illinois' lineup right now. Okay, do they have number 20 or number 42 in the game? No, 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 no. Okay, they have better shooters, which means you're going to get more open looks. And the first possession Edie comes out, they get a layup. The first possession. Okay, well, that was probably a fluke, right? They're probably, I mean, Purdue's probably pretty good defense without Zach Eady. They don't need him to just suffice in there. Okay, so this is the second possession without Zach Eady. Okay, cutter right to the rim. What happens? Uh-oh. So back-to-back -back layups for Illinois in 30 seconds after Zach Eady came out. The first nine minutes, eight minutes and 30 seconds, they scored four points. They doubled that in 30 seconds. Okay, well, so, I mean, this is the third possession. It's got to be random variance, okay? There's got to be, I mean, pe teams get lucky, they get unlucky, blah, blah, blah. Shots go down, don't go down. Hey, you see that ball's deflected there. That's good defense. Okay, so what happens? They're looking for a post-up, and uh-oh. Okay, so we see this player is helping. Maybe that was part of their system, I don't know. But this player is not ready to rotate down to the corner. So there is some miscommunication. This represents the bigger idea I was talking about. If they don't know how the defense works when Zach Eady is not in, or they don't know how the offense works when Zach Eady is not in, you can't be a really, really good team if you need this player to be in the game. Okay, so that brings about the third question, which is, ah, oh, what's the issue, Mr. Ghost Screens? Who cares? He plays the majority of the game. Is that not enough? Okay, well, here's the next possession. And, whoops, there's foul number two for Zach Eady. Now let's watch what immediately happens, okay? So this is a philosophical choice that I will honestly strongly disagree with. Okay, Zach Eady picks up two fouls in 45 seconds or whatever it was, and immediately gets subbed out. Okay, so this is Matt Painter saying, you're too valuable, essentially, we need to save you to make sure we have you in the second half. I fundamentally disagree with this concept. The reason I fundamentally disagree with this concept is because while the ones at the end, those minutes seem like they're the most important, in reality, every minute is equal. Like, you have the same opportunity to score points across the board. So in this situation, Zach Eady already picked up one other slight foul. And now, this one, the other ones I don't think were really his fault. This one was his fault. He got off balance trying to block a shot, and he landed on top of 13. So, that is his fourth foul. With eight minutes left to go in the game, and what happens? He immediately gets subbed out. Okay, so this is the issue: is you lost eight minutes of him in the first court in the first half, and now you're losing up to eight minutes here in the second half. So while he did come back in in the second half, which obviously he has to, he came in sparingly, like interchanged for two possessions here and there, wasn't able to essentially make a huge impact from here on out for the rest of the game. Okay, so now we're going to jump ahead to the end of the game or later later stages of the game and discuss one other question that I ha that I have from this. So what is happening right here? Illinois is one, they have their small lineup out. Okay, so Zach he can't help block from anyone. He's got to guard um, this post player who is a good shooter. Okay, and number three for Illinois, what does he do? He says, get off this side of the court. I'm going to take him one on one. Fletcher Lawyer right here. Okay, so Fletcher Lawyer's had some high shooting games recently. However, in my opinion, he is a massive liability on defense. Okay, and number three apparently thinks so as well. Targets him immediately, just goes right after him. All right, we jump up one possession for Illinois. They do the exact same concept. A okay, three says, I'm going to essentially take 26 this time one-on-one. -on -one. We notice 26 plays much better defense. They straight up, that's a more contested shot for sure. One important thing is who's not on the floor for Purdue right now. You have three minutes left to go in a game, and I get it, it's not that close right now. But if you just make this 15, then you're going to win no matter what. Why is your best player not on the floor? Because now, without your best player on the floor right now, 
they struggle so much more on offense. Like a ridiculous amount more on offense. Okay, so run ball screen, whatever, get the ball on the inside, travel. So this stems the question right here. So Illinois does the same thing. Okay, they switch 26, is in good guarding position. As this drive occurs, deflects the ball. That's great defense. Doesn't swipe in, merely gets it at the point of contact when three is reaching down going after going across his body. That's really, really good defense. Uses his body, stays in the way, never anything that's going to get called a foul, merely just pokes it away and then gets on the floor to get it. So, Fletcher Lawyer has gotten the second most playing time of all the produced players. If you have other players, like 25, that can play good defense, and he shot the three really well in this game, and he's shot it like 50% on the year, unless it's just a fluke and he actually can't shoot that well, why is he not getting like a significant amount more playing time? And finally, we get to the last couple of possessions for the game, um, and we can see it's a six point game right now, so Illinois needs to score. Um, but the overarching questions we're gonna see as Illinois is gonna come down here in a second is one, how important is Zach eating the game? Two, how is Matt Painter going to handle foul trouble when at some point in the tournament, Zach Eady gets in foul trouble? It inevitably will happen. Three, is Illinois going to resort to more of a small lineup to allow more shooters on the floor? And finally, can Purdue remain a good team on offense and on defense when Zach Eady isn't on the floor? They don't have to be a great team, but they have to be a good team that cannot be a massive liability every time that he comes out of the game. I look forward to seeing the results of both these because these are both really good teams, really high level teams. And frankly, this is an exciting game in the last three minutes or so. Very, very exciting. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe and have a great rest of your day.